Good evening, ye in uh, video world. Podcast land. Podcast land, yeah. That would be better to say. <laughs> All right, well, I'm Mick Slum. He's the Miles Revolution, and we're two freaks doing a show, and we've got episode nine of America's Got Talent. Here we are. We're here the same time every week at 6 o'clock Pacific, 7 o'clock Mountain, 8 o'clock Central, 9 p.m. Eastern for all you guys all the way to the right of the country there. And we're live on Facebook and Twitch and Twitter, and you'll probably find us on YouTube. That's the most people that find us. If you like us, give us a like, give us a subscribe. You can find us anywhere at the Miles Revolution if you just search that. If you want to find me specifically, you can look down right here um, at Mixlam Official on Twitter. That's where I'm going to be if you want to find out what I'm personally up to. But otherwise, you can search the Miles Revolution, and that's what Two Freaks Doing a Show is under. And you can find Miles and all his music and other kind of videos on there as well as this show. So, Miles, what do we got going on today? This was a show that had lots and lots of uh, acts in it. I mean, 15. That was the longest uh, or the highest number of acts in any episode this particular season. I was going uh, to bring that up. I was like, this seems like a lot. Yeah. They crammed them in there. Um, I don't know. They seem to have uh, put a few more elimination acts in it this time around. Uh, I don't know if they're just trying to, um, uh, rep or they're reminiscing on the old days where half the acts were X or, or not, but, uh, the way it is, I guess. The one I mean, thing I really don't like is or, I'd like to see more acts that are pretty good that don't make it. I feel like every act that's okay, or at least okay. That they show on TV, they put through, and you really have an idea of what's not going to make it before it doesn't make it. It just seems like I don't know. I like suspense and I like drama, and I feel like there's no suspense and there's no drama if I hear somebody and I go, "Ah, oh, they're okay. I'm sure they'll put them through." Yeah, you know what? I I really never thought about it that way, but I think that maybe they should be doing that. Um, I mean, they've done it with a couple of the acts, like the Alexander and Alexander, which were, you know, pretty good musicians, and they didn't put them through. Yeah. Um, and then the, uh, what are those two twin, or not twin girls, but uh, the two singing girls, uh, they didn't oh, put the, them through either. The country girls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, something and Taylor, Presley and Taylor. I think it's what it was. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't remember their name. Um, over in the chat, we got Sam over in the chat. He says, I remember they used to have over 20 acts in season 13. He's on YouTube. Oh, yeah. really? That's what I remember too. I remember like back in the day in AGT, they would have a lot of acts and they would do a lot of them. I'm not a fan of that format, not because I don't like to see the acts, but I felt in this episode and those old school ones that they would have. They edit down the act. So we're not, like tonight, we didn't see the entire act. You could tell they were edited. And right. that really kind of bothered me. Because sometimes I feel like I couldn't fairly judge some things because I didn't see the whole thing. Well, and they and when they put them through, it's like, and you only see part of the act, it's like, well, why on earth did they put them through? When, yeah. Because uh, I want to know the reasoning or, you know, was it really good or was it not? So... Um, yeah, cramming 20 in probably sure. wasn't the best idea. Oh, hang on. Oh, my, uh, hang on. I can't hear you. My computer. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Now I'm back. Couldn't hear you. What? So when you're uh, coming online in the chat, uh, you know, let us know where you are. Cause we like to know how diverse we are or how diverse we aren't yet. Um, we do have someone who is, uh, who I invited to be on the show, who actually auditioned for America's Got Talent. And we're waiting for him to come in on our podcast. So as soon as he chimes in, we'll bring him on. 
Uh, where, where do we have from from Twitch? Somebody was watching us from Twitch last week. Were they from Sweden? Norway. Norway. Yeah. yeah. One of those Scandinavian awesome. countries. Yep. Yeah. And this person we, we might or might not be talking to. I don't know. Stay tuned to see if we do. I don't even know if he's going to be here. But he's from New Zealand. So right. we've got kind of a nice little international show going here. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, we've had someone from England. Oh, and, yeah, that's uh, true. And the uh, guy from Ukraine and what country? I don't remember he was in. Uh, Thailand or someplace. And then uh, right. uh, Shadow Ace, he was in the Philippines. Yeah, so, so we've got more. Yeah, we might have more non-American viewers than American <laughs> America's Got Talent's more popular outside of the U.S. How about that? Yeah. But speaking of viewers, on kind of a personal note, Miles and myself just want to throw out a big thank you to everybody that's been watching us. I mean, we're not anything compared to some of these shows that are getting, you know, thousands and thousands of viewers each week. But we've gotten the triple digits each week. So we want to thank everybody out there who's sticking with us and supporting us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, you know, we'd be doing good. this show if nobody's watching. So it's cool that somebody's watching. So if you like us, make a comment in the um, comment section just so we know we're there and we'll give you a shout out. Right. And our numbers uh, are going into the triple digits for views for our videos. And, uh, you know, we may not have a big count necessarily watching the live, but I'm amazed as to how many people watch it afterwards. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I've been really surprised. This is the ninth episode of the show. I think this is the 10th show that we've done because we, I think the Simon one didn't count. So this is this our 10th show? Might be. This is the ninth audition show. Uh... So this would be I our, tenth, this yeah, would be our, right. this is, I'm kind of getting a uh, touchy feely here with our 10th oh. anniversary. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I didn't know I could uh, feel this close to you, but you know, here we are. Oh. Here we are. All right, Miles. Well, let's uh, get into it. Let's see what we All got. Right. That's what people are waiting for. They're waiting for our reactions to this mass. Okay. Show. Who do we got? We got uh, on this episode, let's see here. If I can figure out my buttons on the computer. Dual Acero, the Acrobat. Now this show, to me, I loved it. This was what uh, AGT, you know, you're not gonna see this kind of thing anywhere. Not even, You wouldn't even see that in a circus, I don't think, for this particular act. Uh, it was uh, awesome to me. Yeah, I really loved it. Um, but I will say, it wasn't as good as some of the aerial, other aerial pole dancing acts that I've seen <laughs> on the show. But I still loved it. This kind of stuff is still head and shoulders above what anybody else does. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it should definitely go through. But I think... The, the two guys that were on earlier in the season, I can't remember their names, when the guy stands on the guy's head with his head, I think, like, they're a little better. Something but, better. But this is really cool. I mean, the, the picture you put up there, that's pretty amazing. I love it. I'm going to go to – I'm going to watch that in Vegas. It's a total Vegas show. So d should definitely go through. And it's one of those ones with Final Ten potential. Oh, yeah. Um, nothing, nothing bad to say about this other than – for aerial slash pull acts, not the best I've seen. But if we're just talking about acts overall, I mean, it's going to be top 5%. Well, I'd be curious to see what happens with their uh, social media viewership here going down the road here. Man, when I saw that, I just thought, look at those muscles. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> that just came to me. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. I was like, these people's bodies, you look at that dude's body and I say, it's the perfect, it's the perfect mix between tone and muscle mass. Yeah. And yeah, you just got to be so strong to do this. And they were saying it took them four years to perfect. I bet it did. Her beans to stand on him. And I would say it take, I guarantee it takes me longer than four years to be able to do that. 
Yeah, but she's she's just as muscular. Yeah. Holy cow. Uh, and really seem to be nice people. So yeah. So yeah, I'm all I'm all for them. Wish them the best. Yeah. I'd like them to go farther in this competition. I'd like them to go farther. I'd love them to come on the show if they're if they're watching. Yeah, except they had a translator, I seem to recall. So oh, that's right. Well, they can bring the translator on this. That's part. right. We're okay with that. Yeah, we're okay. All right, let's go on to the the uh, famous person of the show here, Summer Rios. Uh, and, and she portrayed this as a, uh, what'd she say? She works at a uh, pizza? Yeah, yeah. She, pizza yeah she says she's ready to, to start doing something other than cutting pizzas. Well, and then I went to look her up. She's been on American Idol. And so she's already doing something than cutting pizza. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm thinking she might do uh, cutting pizza just as a sideline in it uh, on top of her music. So um, I don't know. She, she was actually really good. And when I saw the views um, on social media, it's like, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> she, she's already famous. So um, this girl, when I watched, it's it's not my it's not my thing, it's not my style, but I say she is very marketable. Yep, she, she is. Uh, she's a cute girl. She's got a really good voice, but she has a very contemporary pop voice. If you turn on your local pop's radio station, this is exactly what the female singers sound like. She sounds like an. Uh, I don't know how much you follow modern pop music, but she sounds like uh, Olivia Rodriguez or uh, Olivia Rodrigo. And it's just this very kind of poppy modern style that is in right now. Yeah. She, she wouldn't be big in the 80s. She wouldn't be big in the 90s. But in 2023, this is the kind of voice and the kind of look you're going to go for. Yep. So, so she's going to go somewhere. Even though you don't like the music part of the show, um, I I think they might put her through uh, the first round of cuts, just because she's she's probably that good as far as the music goes. Um, but I'd be interested to see what happens with her social media to see if those numbers go up like uh, that Pootry girl does or did. Yeah, I'm so, sure she's gonna. I'm sure she's gonna go up. Um, I did send a message or comment on her on TikTok, and I saw that her TikTok viewers went up like ten thousand. Wow! Uh, in a day, so yeah, I'm sure a lot of people were sharing her videos around. Yep, yep, that they were. Yeah. So I mean, again, not my style, not my music, not my generation. But for the younger kids, I mean, this has. This has like teenage pop music written all over it. Yep. Totally agree. Simon will probably sign her up. Yeah. Uh, next act was uh, Guinness Book of World Records. And I'm thinking when they put these on there, I don't think they're even part of the competition. They're almost like a sideshow for the show. Or a, let, let's take a, a break and just have a Guinness Book of World Records act on. So we were talking a little bit about stuff before the show. Miles and I don't talk too much before the show, but we did bring this up. It just feels like this season that Guinness is one of the sponsors of AGT or something. This wasn't, I get it was an act, but it was so boring. It was. I like better when Howie broke his record. <laughs> and this... I don't know what was going on. Just the dog dunking the basketball. And here's what I really hit. hit. Ugh. This is what I really, really hate. And right. I, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder why I watch these shows. Because I watch <laughs> these shows and they just, uh, they just really <laughs> and, I, and I get all worked up when I watch them. And I'm like, why don't I watch this stuff? If you're going to break a record, for me to respect that, and for me to be interested at all, I want to see you break someone else's record. 
Unless it's something like your own record of like something a lot of people are doing. Like if you break your own record in the 100 meter uh, uh, dash in the Olympics, that's fine. Cause that's cool. But if you're breaking your own record on like hitting people's knuckles and you're hitting and you're breaking your own record on a dog dunking a basketball on a plastic hoop, <laughs> nobody else is doing this. It's not impressive if you break your record. <laughs> oh, my neighbor to do the other person doing it. <laughs> Try to break a record somebody else did. It's just not impressive to me, and it's not entertaining to watch. Well, I wish the I I wish the act wasn't even on there. Uh, I I mean, I could see maybe why they did it just as a break or something else, or maybe uh, the Guinness people are putting money in AGT's pockets or uh, or one of the producers or something. I don't know why they're on there otherwise. It's not really part of the show. So, I mean, it's not that the act is bad or anything, but I don't want to see it on that show. You know, maybe that's something I would see on the Saturday night uh, videos on the PBS channel or something. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. Bring him on like Jimmy Fallon's show the last two minutes of the Tonight Show and do that. I don't know, but it's... It's just not, it's not something I'm interested in. And yeah, I agree with you. It seems like it's not even part of the show. So I don't know what's going on with this, but it's extremely annoying when they bring these people on because right when they go, we're going to break the record. I'm like, oh no, here we go. It's time to go to the bathroom. Yeah, it's time (laughs) to go to the bathroom. Uh, So it looks like Sam says he agrees it was a waste of time. Someone else said... (laughs) Uh, that was really stupid. Uh, it was so yeah. stupid. So. Then we got breaking a record is not a million dollar act. No, not unless it's a cool <laughs> record. Somebody else's record. Yeah, let's. Uh, <laughs> maybe they could create a special uh, uh, Las Vegas show that's a uh, Guinness Book of World Records where people just sign up to go break records. Now that's know. a good idea, actually. Now, now we're getting real ideas on here. Yeah, what if Guinness had a biggest show of its own and they did it like every two weeks and people would uh, apply to break records and right. then you could buy tickets and you just see people break these random records. Yeah, that's a good, actually a good idea. Yeah, well, you came up with it. So, <laughs> well, <clears throat> you, you know, and, and we need to get the Guinness guys on here. If we get them on our show, we can pitch that. And then right. maybe we can move to Vegas and host it or something. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yeah, that's the ticket. Yeah, now see, now we're coming up with real ideas. I like this. <laughs> maybe our calling isn't to host this show. Maybe our calling is to live in Vegas and host a wannabe America's Got Talent show. <laughs> <laughs> For people who want to break useless records <laughs> that nobody cares about. Right. Uh, <laughs> there was a, one of the the guy that was on here. Uh, I don't remember which episode. Uh, Rush guy. Uh, I guess uh, he. There's some other record he's trying to break uh, with popping balloons, and he got disqualified because he <laughs> taped him down or something. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, beyond this show. So let's go on to our next act here: the Pulse Percussion. Uh, this one. Uh, you know, I think I might have some of these numbers wrong for them because they seem to be a pretty big act. Um, I almost might have to go and check that out here. Um, I'm thinking because I seem to recall like they're already millionaires. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me that somebody funds this because this was a cool act. Don't get me wrong. I like the act. It's not a Vegas act. It's nothing I'm going to pay to see. This had college uh, football halftime show written all over it. And that's not a diss on them. I'm not, I'm not hating on the act. I think it's really cool, but it's, it's a, it's a, it's a drum band. Right. I'm not going to pay 50. Oh, when you're talking about Vegas act, you're talking 50 to $75 tickets. I'm not paying that to see this. 
But at halftime of a football game for 15 minutes or 10 minutes, I can see these guys marching around a field doing something really cool. And I go, wow, that was really nice. Well, I'd be willing to pay for a parking meter to watch them in a parade. Yeah. Yeah, see uh, them in a parade, those kind of things, but not a show, not a standalone show. Now, one thing I will say about this particular group, uh, the Atlanta Drum Academy that was on earlier in the season, this group was a lot more showy to me and impressive. Uh, if they're going to put one of the groups through to the next round, this is the one that I would choose. Well, they're definitely more showy and impressive, and that's why I say, even though it sounds like a put-down, it's not. Yeah. Uh, they seem like halftime show. Yeah, they're really polished. I mean, they, they were extremely good as far as that goes, even yeah. though I hate drum shows. But this one, I did watch it, so it, it didn't bore me. So no, was important. I wouldn't put it through, though. You would not? No. No. Okay. Not good enough to go through. Well, I, I'm just saying that if they're going to pick one of the two drum groups, they better pick this one. Sure. If they're going to pick one of them, this one's better than the other one they had. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Uh, the other one seems like more where mom and dad puts their kids in the drum academy. Yeah. This one uh, is, uh, I think, where real drummers join this group. Um, so. All right. Moving on to Rob. Pot, potty low, potty low, potty low. Uh, didn't have much of a following that I could find, and every video that I saw that he posted, it's like I'm not sure who's watching these videos, but it's nothing that really. Wow, this guy has a lot of followers on Facebook. Twelve thousand for what he does, he does. He has a lot of followers, but I, I yeah, not yeah, not one. not big like some of these other people, but for what he does. I was just looking at my notes because I, I write notes so that I can remind myself of some things about these people. And I'm looking at my notes for this guy. And all I put was what with a question mark. <laughs> I don't understand it. Like, I understand that they want to invite some acts on that aren't just very good. Yeah. And that they can X and all these things, but. This wasn't even fun. I don't feel it wasn't funny either. Um, I don't know. I wasn't entertained at all. When people get X'd, I kind of want to laugh, but I didn't laugh. And I don't know. Laugh. Like it just, it wasn't interesting at all. No, it wasn't. Said uh, he was on the gong show, according to Sam. No, and he has his own Wikipedia page, huh? Maybe this guy, Sam, is this guy uh, popular or what? Do people know who this guy is? I'm assuming if he has his own Wikipedia page and he's on the gong show, AGT invited him. Yeah, probably. I'm assuming this is an invited guy even before this comment. But. Well, he had he a viral like, video that had like. It wasn't funny. Yeah, there, there's a viral video that he had that has like, uh, you know, over a million views. And so I'm thinking that's. Probably part of the reason. Yeah. I mean, I'll still talk to you, Rob, if you're yeah. out there, if you're watching. I always, As I always say, it's nothing personal. I just wasn't – I just didn't understand what was going on. But, yeah. I mean, I'd rather I'd rather people say, that Mixalom guy, he's a real character. I don't think he's very funny. <laughs> I mean, he's good looking, but he has no personality. I'd rather people say that and we have a – and I have a video that – has a million views, then people just tell me I'm good looking with no personality and I have two views. Yeah. So well, that's uh, what I'm going with. So good for him. I mean, if he has a video with a million views, he, I mean, who are we? We're just two, two freaks yeah. doing the show sitting here. This dude's getting a million. Yeah. Views people on are watching AGT. him. They're watching him instead of us. Yeah. So I guess he has the last laugh. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't get it, but yeah, yeah whatever. But good, yeah, good for him. Good. Yep, good for him. All right, this one I could not find on social media, uh, and the only thing I could find is that he was on Britain's Got Talent in 2020. Hmm. So uh, I'm not sure 
what the deal was there that maybe they needed a space filler for the show. So they brought this guy on because they didn't have another act to put in his place. Um, I mean, it was kind of a, he, he did have a good choice of a song and it did kind of work for his particular act, but it still wasn't an act that I would put through. So. All right. I got a hot take for this one. All right, let's go. I liked him. I really liked this guy. He didn't <laughs> have the best voice. He didn't have the best voice in the world, but that's not, that wasn't the thing for me. Cause I don't think this was about the voice is I love the look. The costume was uh, great. And he seemed like he had personality. And this is one of those invited acts that's obviously on to fail. But I feel like given the right situation, this guy seems like an, a legit entertainer. I wouldn't be surprised at all that if we find out who Dev the Devil really is, I think there's something you could do with this guy. I think this guy is probably actually very talented. Uh, looking in the chat there, we got Samuel on YouTube, and he said, loved him in Legend. That's what an legend? 80s classic with uh, Tom Cruise. Do you ever see that movie, Miles? Legend? I guess not. Tom Cruise, and it's in the early 80s. Well, uh, I'm not remembering it. I anyway. like this in it. Huh. Okay. Wow. Yeah. But this guy has some talent. He's brought on to fail, but he can do it. Yeah. Um, if so, so Mr. Devil um, or Lucifer, if you prefer to be called that, if we're on a first name basis, I'd love <laughs> to talk to you because I bet that you have some evilly scary good performances in your actual act you're doing in real life. <laughs> and despite what people say about you, I think you're probably doing some good in the world. I like to ask him about that. All right. Well, uh, maybe he'll watch the show and come on. So we can only hope for the best. Um, you know, what can I say? Come on. Uh, tell us that we're crazy. Do something. Just come on our show. Yeah. All you right. Got in, got, got in the YouTube chat. Uh, heaven voted him out, but now he gets another chance. <laughs> uh, yeah. And he's getting another chance on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Samuel, Samuel, you impressed Miles with that one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, Samuel. <laughs> All right, Gabriel Henrique. Uh, this guy is a star, obviously, in Brazil. Um, and I'm wondering, when he got the golden buzzer, I thought, well, yeah, well, why don't we just bring Garth Brooks on and give him a golden buzzer, too? <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> okay, so this guy, maybe I'm wrong, because I'm just a freak doing a show, but I thought he had a great voice. That's undeniable. I mean, nobody can say the dude can't sing. But I just don't see him being successful in America. I mean, perhaps they they, they have a different style down in Brazil, but he's kind of he looks older. Uh his voice sounds very 80s to me. Uh it, it is not contemporary, unlike the girl that we talked about before. Right. That's something you're on pop radio. You don't hear a voice like this, guys, on the radio now. When oh, you yeah. turn to your pop station, they do not sound like this. And the kind of song he's singing does not is not what's popular. So, And he doesn't have the look. He's too, a little too old. So I don't see this guy having a pop hit in the United States. Well, if he's going to have a hit, he's going to have to get away from doing Whitney Houston songs. Which, uh, which that again, that style of music isn't popular anymore. When you listen no. to late '80s, early '90s pop music, that just that's just not what people are listening to now. No, but I mean, he, I, I think he probably has a place in the market if he's got his own stuff. But since he's just singing, uh, it's like. 
It's he's doing a girl songs in a guy's body. Yeah. I mean, and, and uh, that's really cool, but that's but not, even that that's a circus show. Even as good as he sounded. And I will agree, it was a fantastic cover. <clears throat> I liked it fine. His voice is fantastic. But if you take that and record it, and you put that on your pop station for teenagers to listen to, it's not going to get played over and over. That that version, even if the kids have never heard the original, people aren't going to go for that now. It's just not a contemporary sound. Uh, someone was commenting uh, about the dog act. Um, Anthony, Anthony over in the YouTube chat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just got my chat to work. A few things about the act you covered so far. Leonard Lee, the dog act, has a decent social media presence under the name Live Love uh, Leonard Lee. All right. Maybe we can contact him. Well, oh, maybe, maybe he could break a record on this show. And then we wouldn't talk trash about records because I will talk a lot of good things about records. If you come on our show and break a record, especially if we can get in the book, how they did with Howie. I'm for it. I'm totally <laughs> it. And then Anthony says Atlanta Drum Academy was a golden buzzer and is automatically in the lives, as you mentioned before, they needed to pass cuts. Dev the Devil is a social media presence under the name The Dev Officially. Yeah, let's get a hold of that dude. I say I like him, and I think there's a lot more to the devil than people are giving him credit for. <laughs> Uh, Sammy says on YouTube, Whitney Houston songs are like crack for listeners. I think that's especially true for <clears throat> uh, middle-aged women who grew up in the 80s. Love. I'm just writing these things down here in case this uh, chat goes away here. So I can go get those numbers into my spreadsheet for our future uh, shows where we go over things. All right. Uh, this act <laughs> was this an a uh, uh, artificial intelligence act, and there's a screen someplace up on there in that stage. I mean, this is a holograph or something, right? <sighs> Gosh, I don't. Okay, this one. Okay, I've been waiting for this one because I got. I was sitting and I'm watching this. I'm trying to keep an open mind. I'm an open mind, progressive kind of fellow. But I had no patience for this. This was not the puppet show. I'll tell you that. Puppet show was great, just to bring them back up. You know, a lot of things come back to these darn puppets. But this, this was not puppets. I don't know what it is. I think when Simon goes, hey, can I get a person over here? And then they put the subtitles and the producers explaining it. I was kind of a bit confused what she was explaining. And then these weird, like, things come onto the stage. And I'm not sure if they're really there. I think they're beamed in there. Because I don't think they were really standing there. And then they were just lip syncing to something, music being played backstage. And I'm like, what is happening here? And why is it getting a standing ovation? And why, why is everybody so excited about this? This seemed like something... If I have a three-year-old kid and they're crying and I'm like, hang on, I'm going to make you some uh, macaroni and cheese from this box. And they're like, oh, and I'm like, don't worry, I'm going to cut up some hot dogs in it. Watch this show for 10 minutes while I watch it. That's what this was. I don't know how adults were getting this standing ovation. This was, this was like, yeah, something you give kids to keep their attention yeah well i would have put aerosmith song doesn't mean it's cool this did not belong in the show this is you know my first thought after i looked him up is like i almost think they paid the show the agt show to put them on there to sell their plushy toys i don't think they were even invited on there i think they this is a paid advertisement uh, so well, what are they? I don't know. 
do they do they say they have plushy toys? I miss yeah. That. Yeah, it's uh, you go oh, to uh, noodleandbun.com and they're they're all plushies. <laughs> so they're oh, selling man. these plushy toys. So do we know if they're even on stage Be or were they kind of beamed on there? I, that I don't know. I, I couldn't tell. The first they were on the screen. It was so stupid. And how I I felt like these judges were in love with them and the audience like they were going to get a golden buzzer or something. <laughs> well, uh, the uh, thing about this particular group, but you see their TikTok uh, followers, 6.5 million. So I don't know who's watching them, but obviously they've got a following someplace. Kids. Yeah. Uh, and TikTok. YouTube, almost a million. Oh, this is the one that they've obviously have already made a million dollars on their act. And their, their company or what they're doing. So, And I know they're uh, located in South Africa. So um, kind of interesting. I, I, I don't know how they got on there otherwise. I don't know. But the, the chat seems we got multiple comments in the YouTube chat here about these guys. People, you guys seem to like them much more than Miles and myself. You guys, you guys are all in on these. Samuel saying on the YouTube chat, even America, even America's Got Talent is better with hot dogs. That's not true. <laughs> They're better with puppets. They're not better with hot dogs. I don't care if you put uh, mustard and ketchup and a little cheese on these guys. I'm still not taking a bite of that noodle and bun. If you know what I mean. I'm not doing it. Well, I guess I'm Positive side, they didn't have to set up much that I know for this act. I wouldn't even put them on. It was a waste of my time. That was another potty break for me. Well, Sam, Sam, the, the other Sam we got in the chat said, I actually enjoyed Noodle and Bun, and I'm 28. Wow. They're cartoon characters. Number one, I don't know how you like Noodle and Bun at 28. Uh, <laughs> but number two, what kind of cartoon characters are they? Are they, are, are they actually on a show? Like, are you watching this? Or have you heard of these people? Um, or, yeah, I don't know. Like, where do these guys come from? I mean, do they have, like, a Saturday morning cartoon or something or equivalent or Disney? Yeah, or do they just have, like, a uh, like a web show or something? I don't know. It seems like I – I feel like anything at this point is possible with Noodle and Bun. Once, once Noodle and Bun can make it – once we live in a, a world where an AI Noodle and Bun – can potentially make a top 10 in America's Got Talent. I think really like the machines have won at that point. Yeah. Right? The show's I mean, dead. We can't even have a human on America's Got Talent going through. We got all these humans that are being cut and we got AI uh, bun. Yeah. Well, we got an actor strike right now. So I guess these are the replacements. I guess they're the replacement. Next, we're going to see movies of these people. <laughs> I don't know. All right. That's, well, stay tuned. Know what's the next, uh, Mission Impossible starring Noodle and Bun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get rid of them. All right. Let's move on. Ahead. All right. Zion Clark. Uh, you know, I when I when we saw this, we thought, well, I'm not sure that this is necessarily a AGT act. It's more of a uh, self-worth act. Do you know what I'm saying? So they just put them on there for people to, to uh, know that it doesn't matter what disabilities or problems you may have. You can surmount all of them. I did it. So can you. Um, yeah, me too. This wasn't really an act, um, but I loved it. I just don't love it for AGT. So, I mean, this guy has an amazing story. Right. Um, he's been through a lot. Of course, living with no legs and these things. I mean, I don't know. I can't even imagine such things. And what he did was really cool. I love the show. This guy should be performing at high schools and middle schools and for Boy Scouts and for Girl Scouts and at YMCAs. He should, he, somebody should take him on a tour to talk to young people. He could be a great motivational speaker and do some of these cool acts. AGT, it's not an act. I mean, I'm not paying to see this. But, I mean, I'm not uh, saying anything bad about the guy. 
to me. It was incredibly oh. inspirational. I loved it. I loved the message, but it should have been on a different show. Yeah. And, but And that's what it was to me too. It was a motivational message. You could do anything presentation. And the, perhaps a, the, the thing about it is they put him through, put him through for what? Like, what's he going to do next? Yeah, that, that was my other question. I mean, there's no act here. No. But I did see that he's on a, like a wrestling team or something. When I yeah. went to see some of his well, other we'll videos do, and we'll bodybuilding. We'll trials, right? I think for Team USA and wrestling. Yeah. So, so, yeah, he can fight with no legs. Yeah, I wouldn't mess with him. <laughs> He'd break you in half. Uh, Samuel, Samuel in the chat, in the YouTube chat says, I like it. I don't know how long it lasts as a show. I feel like it lacks legs. So I think that might be true. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, he obviously has a following 1.9 million followers on TikTok and a million on Instagram. So, you know, he's getting some sort of financial kickback there. I mean, the guy's famous. And, uh, you know, I would have him speak at a high school, at a youth group, at a church group, community gathering. That'd be awesome to have him. Yeah. So. Yeah, he'd be a great person to bring out for things. Yep. All right. Moving on to the Twinjas, the martial oh, arts hey. kids. Uh, this was not even comical to me. I'm not sure if it was impressive to anybody else. Oh, well, hang on, gonna... hang on, Miles, before we get to these guys. Anthony says in the YouTube chat, he's a pro MMA fighter. I do remember him saying that. Had his own Netflix series and already too is a motivational speaker. So, really? he, so he took her advice and tours around. So I'm glad to hear that. And he had a Netflix show. So, yeah, obviously this guy was invited on because he already has a following. So, obviously, being on AGT was just part of his tour. Probably, yeah. yeah. All and, right. and so, the things that he did, I'm sure his act was probably, yeah, part of his act. It's pretty canned. So, I'm not sure that he has anything else to present to us no. on another show. So. 1.9 million people on TikTok. Then. Yeah. Wow. All right. Can we move on to Let's the Twin Jets? All right. Twin uh, before we go out of their act, what I was wondering is, uh, and my wife asked, why is there a keyboard behind them? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a prop mistake. <laughs> I guess they never used it. So I, I just thought that was interesting. Uh, <laughs> that is true. I didn't even notice that. Uh, but, you know, I've seen better, better martial arts shows. Um, I mean, there are cute kids and everything, um, but I wouldn't go to watch it unless it was my own kids. Then certainly I'd go watch it, but I don't know. What do you think? Um, it's like, I don't know. Uh, I mean, definitely not. I wouldn't put it through. 100% this doesn't go through. I'm not really sure what it was. I mean, it seemed like something like one of my niece and nephews would say, hey, I've got, I've been in martial arts. We're going to do this little show and I go and watch them and that's it. But nothing was particularly cool. They weren't really fighting people no. and and they weren't like jumping up in the air and spinning and breaking boards or doing anything. They were just pretending to beat up like uh, middle aged men. Yeah. And then somehow Terry Crews gets involved and holds the guy. It just seemed like kind of like a bad action movie. <laughs> and, and I'm not sure how they got through. What are they going to do? I'm not sure how they got on. Not much was through. Um, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a buzzer act. I mean, usually if, if you have an act that's of that caliber, they usually give them X's. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I would, 
if these were adults, they would have for sure got an X. Yeah. But because they were kids, they put them through, but I don't know why. But this is another one of those things. Maybe they put them through because they're kids, but there's no way. Not I mean, I say this, but maybe I'm always wrong, but there's got to be no way these people get to the next round to perform. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I have no idea what they could do next. Just yeah. beat up, fake beat up more guys. <laughs> well, maybe they actually chop wood. So yeah. let's move on to the Bomba Circus guys. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, I, I got the cleaner picture here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was actually a video. So I, I tried to do uh, slides this time, and these were supposed to be actual videos, but uh, I guess it didn't didn't work right. So. Um, this was another one like the the men with pans. Only they had paddles. <coughs> Comical it was. And when I thought they were from Israel. <laughs> and who <laughs> was it? Sophia asked. So uh, do people go and watch this kind of thing there in Israel or wherever it was? It says, well, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> this, I will say... Is maybe oh look in the YouTube chat LDS forever gross 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 <laughs> maybe maybe but I'm not here to body shame anybody um I loved it I loved it loved it loved it in fact this is might be my favorite act of the season uh -oh. <laughs> at least in the top three I love this this was so much better than the guys with pans because. <laughs> These guys were hilarious, number one, when they talked. Two, you don't see it coming. Three, they were actually had some talent, right? They juggle. They kind of bend over. They do a lot of funny things. But I'm all for it. I'm going to go to this act every time. And well, it's a total Vegas show. And, um, and yeah. Right I'm, next I'm, one, maybe. I'm, I'm totally into it. But I think nudity is funny, so I don't know. Well, somebody, Sam here, said uh, he couldn't believe that it was on a family show. And I totally agree. Yeah. Um, you know, if I took my kids to that show, it'd be like, uh, I think we're walking out of here. Well, yeah, I was saying the same thing. I mean, there are kids in the crowd. <laughs> yeah, this isn't like a family show. At least America's Got Talent. They put up the little America's Got Talent logo over right. them. But if you're actually there, these guys are just all over. Drop right. it all over the place, right? Right. They, so, get, they had to keep splitting up that logo. So it shouldn't be on America's Got Talent. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. That it's not a family thing. It, it doesn't belong on here, but I like it. If I was watching Adults Got Talent, I would put this through every time. <laughs> and uh, what what's his name? The guy that used to be the judge on there uh, has his own talk show. Uh, Howard Stern? Howard Stern, yeah, he could be the host. Yeah, he could. Yeah, Howard Stern. These guys could be on a Howard Stern show. We're coming up with a lot of ideas tonight, actually. Well, we could do a. Yeah, you can do an adult Scott Talent AGT and an American <laughs> Talent AGT. Yeah, and it the be, adult one could be on like Showtime at like eleven. Yeah, I, I was gonna say HBO or something. You know. Yeah. Like. <laughs> actually, I think there was a show like that. Now that I've seen a recall. A talent show? Yes. Well, speaking uh, of these kind of shows, I, I've, I've thought this a few times, but I haven't brought this up on here. Pole dancing used to be kind of just for adult entertainers, but in the past few years, pole dancing has actually become pretty big on AGT. And a lot of the people that do these pole dances have been adult entertainers or Vegas entertainers in the past. Hmm. And people have kind of taken the skills on the polls and made it more like family friendly. And so I found like that to be very interesting because a lot of these aerial people and pole people, they've been in a, they've been in like more adult entertainment in the past when you look at them. Well, and now you're seeing this kind of mainstream with that. Uh, Sam uh, says in the, in the YouTube chat, I just don't like acts that involve nakedness and or genitalia. So, well, 
I don't know. Some people don't like nudity. Some people do. Some people are in the middle. This isn't for everybody. I, I readily admit this act isn't for everybody. I like it. Uh, I'm not ashamed to admit it. But I can see this isn't anybody's cup of tea. But it is a Vegas act. Even if you don't like it, you at least have to admit there's a market. Right? I mean, there's a market for this somewhere. The our guy from New Zealand, I think, uh, can you add me on here? Uh, no, he has to click this just a minute here. I have to go get this link. I think he's trying to get on. All right. We're trying to get, if, if you missed the beginning of our show, we have a guy. I'm not sure what his name is. It's a mystery guest. <clears throat> we got a mystery guest from New Zealand who was on a past season of America's Got Talent. Let's see. So, we're, come on. so, yep. so my Miles figures it out. I think my favorite acts of the season so far have been Bomba Circus, these guys, the puppets, going back to the puppets because I love them, and those guys that stand on each other's heads. I can't remember their name. But those are probably the three best so far. Hmm. Well, we'll see what happens. Hopefully we get them. I think he's trying to do it through Facebook or something but he actually has to uh well maybe i can let's see here uh i'm not sure paste let me try on to paste this link okay link in a browser <laughs> let's see who's this hb monty oh this guy's the dj yeah. So this guy, kind, kind of like interesting him. guy. I liked him more. I mean, he's a DJ, right? And to me, I'm not steeped in DJ modern DJism. So a lot of these MCs and DJs seem a lot the same to me. When you have DJs playing in front of all these big crowds, they play kind of cool music. I thought it was funny what he did with the judges. The show was pretty cool. I don't know how different he is though from other DJs that do the same thing. I feel like I feel like there's a thousand DJs in the country that could do this, given the money, um, given the ability to do a show. I feel like there's a lot of people that could do this, but given that, he wouldn't be a Vegas show for me, but he'd be a Vegas nightclub guy. I mean, I he could definitely perform in like that. Um, this is an act that I personally think that the producers developed. The producers of AGT. Um, and they just kind of used him and his DJing personality to, uh, you know, help help the act out. But I think all the, uh, you know, the video and stuff behind him, I think that was AGD, AGT produced and created. I, can I don't buy think that, that was his thing. Yeah. So. Because he probably doesn't watch the show. <laughs> he probably doesn't watch AGT. And they probably invited him on. Yeah. And said, hey, yeah, play your music. We're going to play this. Uh, we're going to play this behind you. Yeah. I mean, he, I, I liked him okay. And I did go and look at, uh, you know, what he's trying to do. And said so he's trying to, you know, leave something for his kids. And, you know, that's why he's making a video every day. And. So, you know, he it's an okay personality to follow. I'm just not sure that it's a – I don't think it's a Vegas act, and it's not something that I would put through. Um, it's an act uh, I would dance to. If he was playing someplace, I'd dance. Sure. But I think that's the point of any DJ, right? Yeah. So that's why I said you can put him in a Vegas nightclub or something. Yeah. But I'm not just going to come watch this, but if you have the – this is why I say a lot of DJs can do this. If somebody gives you the money to create all this stuff in this big screen and you bring your stuff and you do your DJing and your MCing, you're going to be able to put on a pretty big show if somebody's going to give you a budget to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't see this as anything special. I wouldn't have put him through. Not a million dollar act. So. 
I'm not putting this guy through. All right. Uh, Kylie French Fry is what she's known as on most of these social media accounts. Uh, cute girl. She obviously has a, you know, a decent following. Um, but, uh, when I was listening to the song, it was like, I don't remember a single thing about the song. There's no hook. And what Howie, I think said was really valid. Uh, but there's, it wasn't. It wasn't anything memorable about it. Um, and the other thing that got me is, you know, Simon used to say, you know, I really hate bands coming on this show. And I've never seen so many bands until this season. Yeah, there's been a lot of bands. So this, so this is just the girl. This isn't the trio, right? Um, no. Yeah, so yeah, this is just the g- girl singing the country music. Um, good. I liked it. Fine. Yeah. Sound like uh, country music. Sound like something yeah. I might hear on the radio, but, uh, but, but not good enough for me. I wouldn't put it through. I but again, I'm not a country fan. It wasn't anything too crazy good for me. I feel, I feel like it was average music. I feel like I can go down to. In any city, okay, well, not any city in America, but a southern city in America. I feel like on a Friday night, you can go to a bar and you can see this. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, Um, you have a lot of people who can do this. Well, I I guess another thought that I had was this isn't a Drake Milligan. This wasn't an act where I will buy tickets for that show now. Uh, when he was on there, that I mean, that's what I said. Um, this, I wouldn't buy tickets for that. Yeah, I was surprised the judges were so high. Yep. Yeah. Well, Howie didn't say yes. He, he yeah, was- I I was surprised that they all didn't say yes, actually. But yeah. um, but yeah, it seemed out of everybody that Simon liked her so much. It didn't seem like he would. You know, you know, I don't know. Maybe he's trying to get into the country scene. I think he's been bringing on more country singers, which is I find kind of interesting. Um, but nevertheless, uh, she was good and everything. And I know that she has some sort of following and she's doing OK. That's just maybe she just picked the wrong song. So. So you know, we, I, there I was one good. there was one person we missed. Yeah, we're there was a trio that was uh when there we don't have them. I don't remember what their names were though. Did I leave them out of the slideshow? Oh my Maybe. goodness. The Do true villains. The what? True villains. True villains, yeah. Where were they? True villains. They should have been after Zion Clark. Yeah, Ooh. true villains. Because uh, I want to say about true villains, I love these guys. Yeah, I thought, and I have a hard time believing. I haven't looked this up because you're the looker up guy, but I have a hard time believing they don't already have a following. Um, did you look them up? Do you remember? I did look them up. So, have you ever ever heard of a group called Hinder? Yes, they opened up for Hinder. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, Hinder was big in like early 2000s, and they've been kind of nostalgic touring smaller venues lately. Well, and, Hinder uh, has like 76 million followers or something like that. Yeah, I mean, well, they they had they had a few really big songs in the early 2000s. I mean, they were really popular, and these guys that performed uh, what are the, the villains? Uh, something villain. True villains. True villains. Let's see if I can. Bring I them. loved, 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 loved. My wife didn't agree with me, but I loved their version of this song. Uh, I'm like, it was enough the same, but but they really made it their own into a great rock song. And I was like, this is really good. I was like, if you put this on the radio, this would be popular. I don't know if you know the song. Because I don't know you if you know a lot of modern music. But but uh 
Yeah, this was the Billie Eilish song, Bad Guy, that they sang. And I like the original Billie Eilish. I'm not a huge Billie Eilish fan, but Bad Guy is a pretty cool song. But this version, I think, was probably better than Billie's version. So uh, if, if I ever really record a version of this, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in on it. Oh, it, it was a whole lot better than Billie Eilish. Uh, eyelash. <laughs> I, Eilish. Uh, let me see here. Let me go bring it. In the, in the YouTube chat, it says, uh, Anthony, I have a question for Mixalom. What's your preference between True Villains and Steel Panther? Uh, out of what we saw, I've only seen True Villains once. I've only seen this song. So, uh, and I really like that Steel Panther. I've heard a handful of songs because I know who they are. I'm familiar with them. And I haven't really liked any Steel Panther song except I'm trying to Google it really quick so I can see what what song it is. Um, oh, Community Property. This isn't really family friendly. This wouldn't be AGT friendly. But the Steel Panther song, Community Property, I actually think is pretty funny and good. But as far as AGT acts goes of what we saw, I'm definitely going with, uh, with Villains. Villains, I think, is really good. And there's somebody that I'm going to look up on my spare time to see what other things they got. Because if they can write a decent song, I think they got good musicianship. I really like the guy's voice. And I'm a big rock music fan. Just throw out my yeah. own biases, like I show on, say on the show. Not really a country guy. Hip hop, I'm kind of all right on. I like some old school '80s and '90s rap, but I'm really a '90s grunge guy. I love, you know, Nirvana and Pearl Jam and all of that kind of stuff. I'm a I'm a '90s kid, so I love the early '90s grunge sound. So the villains, I think, can do do that. Well, their singer, he actually has a really, uh, I'm not going to say a weird voice, but a very unique voice, which actually was very appealing. That made the whole act work. Yeah. And, and uh, I think that him as a front guy is uh, probably a real winner for them. And, and I can Sam, see them going places. So Sam saying in YouTube chat, uh, if one or either True Villains or Steel Panthers makes live, it would be the first time since season 10 a rock band made the live show of AGT. Yeah, that's true. And I think it would be good for the show. Hmm. Um, I'm not really, as I said, I'm not a Steel Panther fan, but they do have a following, so I could see them going. But I'd really like to see more of True Villains. I really yeah. would. Um, probably out of all the bands that have been there, this is probably one of the few that I can see should go through. Now, uh, I, I know I said Drake Milligan before. I think he just had a band. I don't think it was the Drake Milligan band. So, I mean, he did go through, but as a single, as a soloist with the band behind him. Right. But Sam's talking about in the chat here, the first rock band. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so Drake Milligan's going through with a country band. Uh, LDS says, I didn't like either band. Maybe you don't like rock music. Well, not not that uh, that was my favorite song ever for rock music, but I see the potential there. I mean, even if I didn't like that song or like that style of music, they're going to go someplace. And they got a good look. Yeah, that they've got a they've got a uh, they've got a package that's uh, sellable and marketable. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I don't know how I left them out of the slide show there, but you know. I'm a human, believe it or not. Somebody, I yeah, this is another act that I'd really love to have on the show. Yeah. So, so if you I. guys are watching or if anybody has any connection to True Villains, let us know because I legit want to meet these. I legit want to meet these guys. I like them. Yeah. Well, actually, they did respond to my messages and said that oh. they're not able to do interviews right now. So I'm not sure what that means, but that's what they told me. Well, and hopefully they keep us on the back burner and become yeah. friends of the show and they can be on our list. Right. They re they responded to me on both Facebook and Instagram. So obviously, I, I bet you they're watching this show now. I um, hope so. And, and, and if you guys are watching, 
Believe me, I don't say things I don't mean. I'm not just nice to it. I just don't say good things about every act. You guys have some real, real good stuff. Yep, they do. All right. All right. right. Last here. Uh, we've got uh, blah, blah, blah. Let me get my windows here figured out here. Um, yeah, this was kind of a curious act. Um, I thought it was completely stupid. And, you know, actually, after the whole thing was over, I actually kind of agreed with the judges of putting this person through. Believe it or not, I would have changed my mind. <clears throat> so maybe I'm in the min minority here. But this guy's entire act, love, love, love. This is in my top five probably of the season. Not with the reveal. The reveal ruined it to me. It ruined it, ruined it, ruined it. <laughs> really? I love the guy's act. Obviously, it was an act. I don't know. Was he fooling everybody? If so, I mean, even better. Um, how he brought up uh, Andy Kaufman. And I'm a, I'm also a big Andy Kaufman fan. I love this style of comedy. I love, I love when people stay in character. And it was just so funny to me. He was so annoying and you just wanted to strangle him, but it's just so good. He was so good at it. Is this a girl? Teresa in the yes. chat? The girl. Yeah, Chris oh, like, is her name. And this is one of her acts or one of her personalities that she does in her okay, show. Okay, was she playing a man? Yes. Okay, well, then I was even more fooled. That's even better. Yeah, I mean, it was awesome. This character was so good that it was like, you got to put this through the person staying in character the whole time. And it's like, you're buzzing them. And I feel like, was this person just brought on to buzz? I feel like it almost was. But then when they revealed it was all the joke, all of a sudden everybody had all this respect for it. You know, <laughs> it was like, didn't we all, all already know it was a joke? <laughs> or did everybody think this? Was, I don't know. What did you think? Mom? Did you think this was serious? Uh, I thought it was a joke initially, and then uh, it's like, well, wait a minute. Something is just uh, – how come this person isn't playing anything? There's got to be more to the story. Yeah. And uh, so <laughs> – I when mean, the I thought it was great. Yeah. Um, so I, I knew there, that there, there had to be something going on here. Um, and then it was revealed, uh, and then I looked her up, and, yeah, she's a comedian. Well, I thought obviously it was a comedian. Yeah. So I, um, I thought, well, that's awesome. Especially she, shouldn't, she shouldn't have had to reveal herself to get through. Because now what does she do? Because now, now if she's going to go on to the next thing, she you can't do this character. You can't do a character again if we've already seen you out of character. The reason this is funny and it works is because we see you in character. When you play a character, I want to see it. Um, I don't know if you've seen Sasha Barra Cohen's characters like Ali G and Borat and Bruno. And we want to see these people in character. Same with Andy Kaufman and all of these great character actors. Pee Wee Herman. Yeah. Rest in yeah. peace. A real yeah. legend who we just lost. We want to see P we for years. We saw him as Pee Wee Herman's not Paul Rubens. Right. That's what makes the act so good. And I feel like this is one of those acts is, if right off you reveal yourself, I'm not buying it next time. So if she comes out and does this character, another character, I hope I like it, but I feel like something was really lost. Hmm. Haven't really the thought mystery, about that one, but you actually have a valid point. Makes it good. Yeah, you have a valid point. I didn't even know there was a female. <laughs> and and even. Even that, it like, loses something in the act for me. I mean, you're you're fooling me. And a lot of comedy, this sort of comedy is the best when you're stuck questioning the reality. Is this person serious or are they, are they pulling my leg? Is this person a male? Is this person a female? Do they think they're a good singer or are they singing bad on purpose? Are they stalling or are they just really nervous or is this a joke? That's the best kind of comedy in a lot of ways when I'm guessing. And now all that's thrown out the window. Hmm. 
So in other words, this was ruined for you once the reveal was made. The reveal ruined it for me. And I think I was in the minority there. But I loved it. I loved the act. So I say one of my favorites. And I was very upset. Probably the first time. Um, probably since the first time since Puppets this season. That I was upset when they X somebody. Because I was like, this does this is genius of what's going on. This is genius comedy. And I don't think the audience is appreciating what we're seeing. And they obviously didn't. And so the person at the end had to save themselves and say, hey, it's just a joke. I'm going to take off this mustache. <laughs> and they shouldn't have had to do it for people to recognize how funny and brilliant this was. Well, uh, who was it? Sam said, I hope Krista makes it to the live shows and does another character. And then it'd be funny if they got four X's again. Well, that that would be funny. <laughs> that would be funny if they got four X's, but only if the judges were serious. Well, what, what would even be better is if they if is if somebody else came out as the same character, but it wasn't really her under it. <laughs> Look like her. That would <laughs> That's another good idea. Oh, cool of idea tonight. Well, that's our show. That's All right. Been. Now, it looks like our other friend here, looks like he was not able to log on. He said he needed to get on his laptop. So he says he'll have to jump on when he gets home from wherever he is. So I don't know how he's communicating. Um, maybe with just Messenger or something, and it isn't where he can get a good connection or something. So we want to throw out again. We've thrown this out in the past. If there's things you guys would like us to tackle, maybe in future shows, because we're we're gonna keep going after after AGT is over, we're gonna keep doing live shows. Miles and I have thrown around some ideas on the AGT off season what we might do. Maybe we'll watch another show. Maybe we'll talk about other AGT related things. Maybe we'll just do something semi related. We don't really know yet. So if you have ideas of things that you like, shows you watch, or things you'd like us to react to, on the YouTube channel, just go to the, re the replay of the show or, and just type in the comments section of the YouTube video and let us know what you think, um, what you'd like us to react to, or if there's a show you think we should watch and discuss next or anything like that. One day we're going to get a Patreon set up. Um sooner than later hopefully <laughs> and again if you want to follow me on twitter go ahead uh mixalom official on twitter right there most things including this show is going to be under the miles revolution channels because that's our parents channels on youtube facebook twitch twitter and uh everything else just search miles revolution so we really appreciate everybody. If you haven't subscribed to us, subscribe to us. Tell your friends about us. We're really cool guys. We may be freaks, but we're doing a show, and we love doing it. And we love all you who interact with us each and every week. Um, Anthony, you put a comment on the YouTube. You could just bring contestants from past seasons on every week and interview them on their experience. would be interesting to see how experience changed after their COVID switch. Yeah. I agree. That's one of the ideas we've thrown around is, yeah, continuing interviews and stuff like that. Yeah. A big show that I'm into. I'm not going to get Miles to do this, <laughs> but maybe I'll do some of this. I'm going to start some of my own videos here, some of my independent stuff. Then I'm, I'm a big, big brother fan. I don't know if any of you are big brother fans out there, but I might make videos on big brother every now and again. It's so having our longest season ever right now. And it's going to be 100 days. So that's what my next 100 days is going to be filled up with. But I still got <laughs> for this show in AGT. All right. So subscribe to us, like our videos, share with your friends. Show us some love online. We appreciate you all so much. We really do. I love you. Miles, we got anything else? We don't have anything else. Uh, looks like our friend uh, Junior Mara. <laughs> Mara Mary uh, was the guy, so we're going to try to bring him on next week. Uh, looks All like right. he was having some uh, connection issues, so wasn't able to be there, but we'll bring, certainly uh, 
bring him or anybody else who has been on the show. We will do our best to bring them on. And uh, All right. excellent. Then uh, I'm Mixlom. He's the Miles Revolution. We are two freaks doing a show on the Miles Revolution YouTube channel. And Facebook and Twitter and Twitch and all those things. And we will see you all next time. All right. Goodbye, video and.